The wind industry has been growing at an absolutely astonishing rate. Uh, it's been growing at about a 40% rate every year for each of the last four to five years. And what's been happening is the, the nation has an enormous amount of wind resource areas, which are superb, but the transmission grid doesn't really go to those areas. The wind industry basically grew up around a model where you look for the intersection of windy sites with transmission lines, okay? And that's where wind farms have gotten built over the last decade. Going forward, there's still plenty of wind out there. There's just not much transmission. So those spots, those intersection spots have tapped out. So what we need to do now is build the transmission infrastructure to get the wind energy, which is plentiful, to the communities, the factories, the farms, and the cities, and all the other places where we need new forms of electricity. We've got a lot of friends and neighbors right around here that have had their land signed up for years already to build wind farms or to have turbines on their property and they'll just have to let their options expire because there's no way to transmit out what they're going to produce. There's the transmission capacity is not there to take what can be produced. Right now we get about 2% of our electricity in the United States from wind energy. If we're ever going to get anywhere in the double digits, 10%, 15, 20, 25%, we have got to build more transmission. The grid was not designed to do what we're about to ask it to do. The electric system was built over time, not as a national system, but rather you had small local utilities and they would want to electrify the town and they would build a coal plant to serve their town and they would run wires in their town and the coal plant would serve that town. And then over time, they slowly connected. But what happened was the, the grid grew up as a result of those sort of very gradual over time connections. So what you've got is you've got a local distribution system that kind of goes all across the country and is connected. But if you want to move major amounts of power from Nebraska to Chicago, you can't do it today. To get this corn to market, you need an interstate highway system, you need railroads to get this corn to where it needs to go. By the same token, you need transmission lines to move wind energy to market. What we're talking about here is the infrastructure for the new energy economy, okay? And to build this new energy economy, you gotta have a backbone of infrastructure in place. To put together a wind farm like the one here, like the one we're looking at today, is you gotta get a lot of pieces of the lineup. You gotta get the community behind you, you gotta work with the landowners, you gotta work with state officials. And we feel like that's exactly the same approach that you need to take to build a successful transmission line. If you can get all those people pulling behind you, you can get a project done. The central analogy of the Rock Island Clean Line is the comparison between the new transmission line for wind energy and the old Rock Island Railroad. And when you think about the Midwest and the way that the Midwest was built and the way that Illinois and Iowa and Nebraska were built, they were built as a result of uh, the railroads that allowed farmers to grow their crops and raise their livestock and sell their product to market. And we're, we're really very excited and we're finding a lot of people are very excited about the ability of this new Rock Island line to be a farm to market road for the 21st century. The Rock Island Clean Line is a project that will allow approximately 3,500 to 4,000 megawatts of wind to be located in Iowa, South Dakota, and Nebraska to be delivered to Illinois and from Illinois points east from there. The expected cost of the line is in the neighborhood of $2 billion, and the expected value of all of the wind projects that would be built uh, and would serve the line uh, would be approximately seven to $8 billion. So you would see an enormous amount of job creation that would result from that. You would see enormous benefits in terms of property taxes that would be paid uh, by those facilities. You would also see significant job creation in all of the manufacturing facilities that would be producing the equipment uh, for the wind farm.
That's mostly what we do is wind turbine gears. Depending on how many we are contracted to do, um, I can do about four of these a day here. Last year was a record year for the wind industry. There were 10,000 megawatts that were built nationwide, and our project alone would motivate 3,500 to 4,000 megawatts. That's about, what, 2,000 windmills? A little bit under it, which is 2,000 of those gears, and that's a lot of work. If the transmission lines aren't built, then people aren't going to buy windmills, and they're not going to order gears from our company that employs me. We're committed to making sure that there are beneficiaries all across the line. There will be beneficiaries in Illinois, there will be beneficiaries in Iowa, there will be beneficiaries in South Dakota and in Nebraska, whether it's consumer benefits or economic job creation benefits or the actual project development benefits. And one of the wonderful things about this, about the renewable energy industry that we've seen over the last decade is that as the industry has taken hold, a lot of manufacturers are setting up shop in areas either in windy states or in areas right next to windy states so that they can supply this burgeoning market. If you want to move major amounts of power from the Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa region where the wind resource is superb and some of the best wind resource in the country and you want to get it to Chicago, you want to get it to the, the load that really needs it, then uh, DC lines make a lot of sense because they're very, very efficient over long distances. With this particular line right here, you could move around five, six hundred megawatts of wind energy on this particular line. But if you use HVDC on a right-of-way like this, you can move about 3,500 megawatts of wind energy down that line. A major project like the Rock Island project uh, that can bring in three and a half thousand or four thousand megawatts of new wind energy, uh, that is a significant amount of power and that's going to have a significant impact on prices and that's going to benefit all consumers in Illinois and it's also going to benefit consumers uh, in markets all to the east. What you got to understand is this is not about the cities. This is about the towns, this is about the factories, this is about clean energy for our entire economy. I think it's interesting to note that if you talk to Iowa farmers, you talk to Iowa state officials, you talk to everybody out there, everybody understands that transmission is the big challenge facing renewable energy. What needs to be recognized on all sides is the line has to go through somewhere. And so it's what you're really choosing is the, the, the best available route. And the best available route might not in all instances be a, be a route that makes absolutely everybody happy. It's going to have to be done and people are going to have to understand that. It doesn't do you any good to build a farm if you cannot move your electricity out to the point where it needs to be. Right behind me is a turbine that just shut down. And what happened there is the grid operator said, hey, there's too much wind in Iowa right now. We can't handle all this electricity. So they're curtailing the machines and shutting them down. There's just more wind than there is transmission capacity to get it to market. Now there's plenty of people in this country right now who need electricity. If we could build some of these transmission projects, then a lot more wind farms will get built and a lot more of our energy will come from clean sources.